Welcome to worship. I'm Susan Cartmel. Welcome whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey. Welcome to this place where we believe that you are a child of God and a gift to the world. These days there are plenty of people with lots to say, but it's hard to find someone who makes you really stop and think through things in a new way. There are lots of opinions out there, but it's hard to find someone who's wise. Hundreds of voices air opinions on social media or podcasts or television, but too many of them promote their own views or try to use this moment to prove what they already think about the world. It's rare to find someone with original ideas or insights. The Bible is full of wisdom, but you have to look for it. Today, we will learn about a man who gave good advice to Moses. You might not imagine that Moses needed advice, but we all need a wise counselor. Today's sermon is about Jethro, a priest who quietly observed what was going on and gave Moses some new ideas. His story has a lot to teach us about what wisdom looks like today. So we welcome you to Pilgrim Church in Harwichport with its strong faith tradition and conviction that the Bible is relevant to our lives today. Our services are broadcast on Facebook, on YouTube, and on our website, pcchp.org. You can always share them on your Facebook page. Now, let us come into God's presence with a song.
In the quiet of this hour, we seek your wisdom, O God. We need your counsel. Help us to reflect honestly and openly on our own prayers. Help us to lay our burdens down and seek your guidance. Our hearts are full of concern. Our minds are full of questions. Our souls are heavy in this moment. We pray for our world, those sick with COVID-19, those quarantined, those isolated from family, and all of us anxious about the future. We pray for children in our land who are planning to celebrate Halloween this week and trying to figure out the safest ways to do it. We pray for all the kids wanting to play together, wishing they didn't have to wear masks, trying to be brave because that's what kids do. We pray for teachers who love their children and seek to teach under such unusual circumstances. We pray for families around the world. Give them patience and flexibility, courage and a sense of humor. We pray for all those who feel strapped and worried, who wish there were more hours in the day or more days in the week or more time to relax comfort and bless them all. We pray for our nation, for our economy and all the small businesses struggling to survive. We pray for workers who've lost their jobs, for those looking for work and those who have given up, and those struggling to buy food or rent or pay their rent. We pray for those in temporary quarters after losing their homes in a fire or flood Watch over them long after the news reporters have left town. We pray for the soul of this nation and our own souls, for the cost of racism, for the violence in the air, for the divisions we cannot seem to heal. Brought to our knees by an invisible virus, we know we've lost our way. We know we need you, Holy One. Put your healing hand upon us. Restore our sense of hope. Renew our faith in one another. Revive our faith in you. In Christ's name we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are grateful for your generous support of Pilgrim Church. Thanks for making so much of this ministry possible. If you hear something today that inspires you and want to support the ministry, or if you normally give to Pilgrim Church during worship, you can donate now. On Facebook or the homepage of our website, pcchp.org. If you prefer to mail your contribution, you can send it to Pilgrim Church, 533 Route 28. P.O. Box 247, Harwich Port, Massachusetts, 02646. We appreciate your generous support, especially now.
grateful to the choir of St. Olaf's College in Minnesota and their rendition of the hymns of faith, especially this recent one, which is a Hebrew anthem that pretty much transports you to the sands of the Middle East. This October, our sermons will be about ancient heroes from the Bible. Today, my sermon is about Jethro, man of wisdom. The scripture lesson is Exodus 18, 7 to 9, and 13 to 23. Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, and he bowed down and kissed him. And they asked each other how they were doing. And then they went into the tent. And Moses then told Jethro everything that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians on Israel's behalf all the difficulty they had on their journey, and how the Lord had rescued them. And Jethro was glad about all the good tidings that the Lord had done for Israel in saving them from the Egyptian power. The next day, Moses sat as a judge for the people while the people stood around Moses from morning until evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, What's this that you're doing for the people? Why do you sit alone? What you are doing isn't good. You will end up totally wearing yourself out. You can't do it alone. Now listen to me and let me give you some advice. And may God be with you. Your role should be to represent the people before God. Explain the regulations and instructions to others. Look among all the people for capable persons who respect God, trustworthy and not corrupt. Let them sit as judges for the people at all times. They should bring every major dispute to you, but they should decide all the minor cases themselves and then you will be able to endure. And all these people will be able to go back to their homes much happier. Well, Moses was trying to do it all. He was struggling to keep a step ahead of the people. He'd become the arbiter of every dispute. Such a trusted leader that everyone came to Moses for every decision. When someone disputed with a neighbor about a goat, they asked Moses to decide. When they wrestled over the place to put down tent stakes, they came to Moses for advice. When people competed over an eligible bride for their son, they went to Moses. So the lines were long outside the prophet's tent, and he was overwhelmed. Jethro came for a visit and watched the way the camp worked. He recognized what was needed. He sat down with Moses to give him some advice. And Moses was not threatened by the older man, but grateful. Now it's hard to give or take advice. It's rare when generations can support one another like these two did. In this remarkable scene, we catch a glimpse of a remarkably wise man, an unsung hero who was able to advise one of the greatest men who ever lived. Jethro was his name. As we try to imagine what went on and why it worked, I think Jethro must have shown wisdom that was astonishing. Wisdom is always in short supply. In these days, wisdom is one of those qualities we all search for. Who's wise enough to help us find our way in a pandemic? Who has the ability to understand a virus? Who can advise us on how long this will last or what risks are acceptable? Who can help us get through? If we study the story of Jethro and Moses in a tent so many centuries ago, it can help us 
to find out what wisdom might look like today. Let's take a closer look at Jethro. First, Jethro saw things accurately and honestly. When they first met, Moses had come to his home for dinner. Moses had met Jethro's daughters at the well and had helped them when some bullies in the village were preventing them from watering their flock of sheep. To return the stranger's kindness, Jethro invited Moses for dinner. And that's when Moses confessed that he was running from Egypt because he was a Hebrew who had been adopted by the Pharaoh's daughter and raised in the palace. But Moses was enraged by the way the Hebrew slaves were treated. And so he beat an overseer to death. Jethro decided that Moses was not a hooligan, or, but someone with a strong sense of justice. He saw promise in Moses and took him under his wing. He hired Moses to manage his flocks and treated him like a son. Eventually, Moses fell in love with Jethro's eldest daughter, Zipporah, and Jethro supported the couple. He could see that the marriage was good for both of them. In today's story, Jethro goes out to the camp where Moses has led his people, and he quietly observes the way that Moses' leadership is going wrong. He recognizes how overwhelmed his son-in-law has become. And then he offers advice. Wisdom is always born of honesty. It comes when we're truthful about what's going on. It comes when we can face our shortcomings and be open to new possibilities. And secondly, We're only wise when we let go of our egos. Lots of smart people are not very wise because they cannot see their own prejudice or how their needs get in the way of their assessment of things. They can't get out of their own way. Now Jethro was a priest in Midian and he had risen to the rank of high priest In his country, he was among the most respected people, a great leader. But he wore his authority easily. It sat like a mantle on relaxed shoulders. He knew who he was and had no need to prove himself in Moses' camp. And though he bore so much authority at home, he came to the camp as a father-in-law. He didn't need people's adulation there. He didn't seek their attention. He was content to quietly observe. I'm betting that Jethro's ability to remain humble allowed Moses to listen to him. As I talk to grandparents these days, they tell me about the way that they have learned how to give advice to their children. They smile with hard-won wisdom and say, well, you have to pick your battles. Sometimes I see things that I'd like to address, things that might make life easier for the people I love, things I wish someone had told me. But I had to learn them the hard way and you have to pick your battles. Sometimes you cannot protect your family from learning things the hard way too. Wisdom comes to those who are willing to get out of their own way, get out of the way of their own egos. And finally, wise people build bridges. They seek common ground, common good. Jethro might have avoided Moses from the beginning. He really was an outsider in a very insulated village when he showed up. Moses had been raised in a palace. 
He arrived in Midian dressed like a prince. Jethro might have sent Moses packing when he heard that Moses had killed an Egyptian. Jethro might have decided it was too risky to harbor a fugitive that the Pharaoh would be hunting for. There were lots of reasons why Jethro would seem justified in building walls to protect himself from Moses. And then when it was clear that his eldest wanted to marry a prophet, she'd be forced to travel with Moses, sometimes go home to her family back and forth. Jethro might have put his foot down and undermined their marriage. There was no promise of a stable home life when you were married to Moses. But Jethro saw things differently. Intrigued by Moses, he became the father-in-law of a prophet. And the father the prophet never had. He created a bond with him that ultimately supported his daughter's happiness. One of you sent me a great op-ed piece written by a Jesuit, Matt Malone, and an Episcopal priest, John Danforth. They say that they're concerned about the fractious polarization in our world today and how divided we are. With real wisdom, they write, ultimately, we all bear responsibility for polarization. This may seem like unwelcome news, but it's the opposite. Pointing to the time-treasured practice of passing the peace in worship, these two suggest that we use this model more broadly by reaching out to political opponents and saying simply, I am your friend. If we could be more intentional about a ministry of reconciliation, it would be a profound gift to America, they write. They argue that it's essential for Christians to take responsibility for healing our divisions and not adding to the problem. We can build bridges where there have been walls. And until we begin to heal the divisions in our land, we will only flounder. It's the better part of wisdom to try. A long time ago, a man of wisdom came to Moses. Jethro was a leader in his own right, and he had advice, good advice to offer. To their credit, the two men recognized that it was wise to work together. Now may the living Christ go with you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, behind you to encourage you, and before you to show you the way. Amen.